Hey, I'm Alex Rome, and today we're going to be remaking this song, San Holo Light. These are the chords that I have. Uh, I took these right out of the beginning of the song, kind of like right here. And they sound like these. Now, the chords might not be perfect, but what my goal is to get the sounds as perfect as I can, because if I can remake those sounds, then that will just make me that much better of a producer, because now I know how to make something that I didn't know how to make before. So we're going to go in the beginning section of this song and remake those chords, because then we're going to transfer those chords over to the drop and use them for the drop. So the chords in the beginning, they're actually made with a sound or sine wave and they somewhat sound like this but we're gonna make them sound a little bit better I believe there may be two octaves in this sound so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another octave just because I think that's how he made it. It may not be, but that's okay because we just delete it later. So that would be a sound that I would get out of the beginning of the song. Now the cool thing about that is San Holo typically transfers the energy from the beginning of his songs to his drop. So I in this song, I will get away with using the exact chords in the drop. But the chords, however, aren't going to be the leads. These are going to be like the middle section of the mix. So what happens to these chords then is they turn into sols for the drop. I'm actually going to just use one layer because I think we'll get a better result. So that's going to be the big filler chord that's going to be in the background and we can add some reverb to these just to make them sound more alive. I'm going to add a lot of length onto those. Now every time I'm layering a sound like this, I know I'm going to put a bass line under that. So right away I like to EQ out the sub bass area. A lot of producers on YouTube I see, they do this last, but I just like to get everything ready to move forward. So I make my workflow very, very vertical. And that's what vertical is. It's like perfecting every sound before you move on versus horizontal, where you literally move horizontally and then go back and work vertically. Just a little tip for you. I'm gonna compress these too. I don't need too much compression on a super saw because they're pretty much a flat signal. They're not that dynamic. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bass line out of these. And the bass line or the bass, bass notes, I should say, are going to be the notes at the bottom of the chord. And then I'm just going to come here and paste them. Oops. Let's go try this again. Just click on this. There we go. So for this bass line, all I'm going to do is add a layer of pure sub bass because we already have our nice chords that are going to help us out up top. These bass lines are typically very, very like 808E in his songs and the way we would go about making that is just take a sine wave and then process it until we get something that we like. Sounds like it's sitting a little high so I'm going to turn it down. 
and it looks like this one will get a little too low this note right here so I'm gonna pull it up an octave and I'll explain it again so we don't get confused this note I could barely hear it let alone see it if I open up this EQ here so this note is a lot like a lot of it is below 50 and to me that's pretty much worthless so I'm just gonna put it up an octave and it'll do the same thing it'll it'll give me the same note it just won't be so low that we don't hear it so let's go into overdrive So now what we can do is we can go ahead and start adding the percussion. Go into the Boutique 808 kit and then go to kick number one. And then come into Distortion, Overdrive, and when you add Overdrive to this kick, it is huge. right there just made that tiny kick sound huge next thing we have to do is add a snare And so before I move on any further, I'm going to sidechain all of these layers to our ghost kit because we're starting to get a little messy. Okay, so I have my bass line and my chord sidechain. So now I'm going to duplicate these chords and just give them a nice layer. This layer, I'm going to push to the outsides with my direction mixer. By that, I mean just I want no mono in this at all. And for this layer, I'm going to push this up an octave. And I'm actually going to give it another octave up too. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is get started on the lead, and the lead is simple again. It's just another saw wave. That's why I think it's so valuable to learn the sounds between the different, like, the different basic waves. So every synthesizer has these basic waves. A lot of them will have a white noise wave in there and a pulse wave. Some people call square a form of a pulse wave but if you get to know your basic saw waves it's a very valuable thing to learn because then you can go ahead and like make anything so on this lead I heard something like this a high unison high detuned lead and obviously has a lot of reverb it also has a little bit of glide too with one number so let's get to this 